Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is a man of great character with a fantastic team first mentality. He is Florida State quarterback, Mackenzie Milton. And today we are going beyond football. Hey, KZ, welcome to Beyond the Lines. What's going on, Rusty? Thank you for having me. Now, I know you've been in Florida, the state of Florida for some years now, but what are some things that you miss about Hawaii? I would say I miss the people, first of all, and then the food. The I've, food from where? Oh, everywhere. Zippies. Um, I've grown pretty fond of uh, my cafe in Kapolei. That place is unreal. They have these malasada pancakes. So every time I go home, I go there, I get smoked meat. Um, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's the best food in the world. And I, I tell people that here all the time. And well, I know that you love it there in Florida as well. And, and the, the people of Florida absolutely love you. And, and Mackenzie, I want to ask you about your family. I mean, your parents, Mark and Teresa, are incredible people. What are, what are, what's the biggest thing you learned from them? Dude, like you said, um, just how they treat people. And then also just working hard. You know, they've done everything to, you know, provide for you know, my family and myself. So, you know, I... I I appreciate them greatly for all the lessons they taught me along the way. And, you know, I am who, who I am because of them. No, oh, and, and Mackenzie, that's so good. I got to know your dad pretty well now. He's, he's my new friend. And, and I know that you and Tua Tungavailoa are friends for a long time. How did your friendship begin with Tua? Oh, uh, you know, we met in uh, elementary school. He uh, joined my, uh, my parents' youth football league along with his brother, Talia, and uh, his cousin, Myron. They were on our football team, and he was our quarterback, and I was a running back, and we played together for a season. So that's how we first met, and, you know, we kind of kept in, kept in contact since and followed each other's career since, competed against each other, and, you know, um, like I said, I've just kind of supported each other ever since. So, you know, he's a, he's a class act. What you see is what you get with him, and, you know, he's definitely someone, you know, I look up to, and, just the way he carries himself and obviously the way he plays, he's an unbelievable football player. No, and, and tell me about that, that youth football league. That's something that your parents had started? I'm not, I'm not sure if they started the YPO Panthers, but they inherited it and they ran it for, I think, 15 plus years. And, you know, it's out of YPO Gentry, YPO Gentry Park, and we played our, our games at Milani District Park. And, you know, that's how I made some of my lifelong friends um, from playing in, in that uh, league. And, you know, they, gave, they just gave back to their community and, you know, which they kind of adopted moving from the mainland. So um, I was extremely grateful for that because it, it provided me an avenue to, one, fall in love with football, and then, two, make some lifelong friends, like I said. No, that's so good to hear because they, they definitely made a huge positive impact with so many, uh, so many families uh, here in Hawaii. And, and uh, KZ, I want to ask you about my books. I know you have both of my books and uh, you're, you're in the first, you're reading the first book so far. Are you liking it so far? I am. I'm liking it so far. One thing that's kind of stood out to me is, or two things that kind of stood out to me is the first thing is just, you know, everybody has choices and your choices kind of ultimately lead to who you are and then the four p's is what still got to me in the early chapters of you know one people um everything you do involves people and especially in sports so and one thing i've learned you're only as good as the people around you and then process i don't feel like you can cheat the process it, it always takes something to get to where you're going and then um purpose i think purpose comes before process i'm sorry so finding your purpose is obviously important. And then performance, you got to perform to be great. And like you did at Puno, you guys won 22 straight state championships, which is unbelievable. You know, I, was, I, only, I was only able to get one at Milani, so I know how hard it comes. Hey, KZ, I'm impressed that you know the four Ps. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, it's out to me, really. So, <laughs> no, I, I feel grateful that and honored that that you like the book so far. Hopefully, you keep liking it. And and I want to talk more about your experience at Mililani uh, High School, being the quarterback there, and and um, you know, winning the state championship. You guys had a pretty good team that year too, right? Yeah, and in, in uh, I think it was 2014, we uh, actually beat Punahou, but they beat us the year prior. But yeah, we had some talent on that team, and I would argue it's maybe the best high school team ever. I'm obviously biased, but you know, between you know myself, Avai Malapai, Kala Kala Tamateo, Rex Manu, um, Kaimana Padello, Kainoa Wilson, Tui Valley Purcell, there are a lot of guys play D1 and, and more than anything, you know, we work really hard and coach Rod York, he instilled a, a work ethic in us and just a team camaraderie. I think that's where I really learned, you know, you know, there's no individual success without team success. So especially in the game of football, you know, it's all 11 guys working together and, you know, it's a beautiful thing when it happens. Right. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to beat a really, really good Punahou team. And it, it literally came down to the last plays. So, um, that's something I still think back on and look back on sometimes. And, you know, those were definitely some great moments. No, oh, that's good to hear. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in Mililani and, and I was, a I was actually cheering for you because I, I became a fan of, of you, Mackenzie, just watching you as quarterback and, and just how you compete. And I like hearing that coach York had that, you know, team first mentality mm-hmm. and Casey, what, what attracted you to go to University of Central Florida? Well, you know, I only had a few offers coming out of uh, high school. I, I got hurt my senior year, I hurt my throwing arm, sh- my shoulder, which I think kind of kept some schools away from me, really, in the recruiting process. And it turned out to be a blessing and, you know, ended up leading me out to UCF. And I think the main thing was, you know, watching Marcus Mariota play at Oregon and, you know, um, Scott Frost, he – he was his offensive coordinator, and that was my dream school, Oregon. Uh, especially, like like I said, watching Marcus do his thing. So just having the opportunity to play under Coach Frost and, you know, the offensive scheme he ran. And, you know, I knew I could surround myself with some talented guys going to Florida or the state of Florida. And, you know, sure enough, there's been a number of guys that I played with that have ended up in the NFL. And, you know, we had some some great times and some some really good success over there. And KZ, I mean, that's that's an incredible story uh, with you and Coach Scott Frost because um, UCF was 0-12. And then was it your first year that UCF went 6-6 six and six, and then your second year you guys went undefeated 12-0, and winning the Peach Bowl over Auburn, who was ranked number seven in the country? Yes, sir. Yeah, our first season, um, we're coming off of 0-12 year. And as a freshman, you know, I started – several games and we went six and seven and then following year, like you said, we went 13 and 0 and beat Auburn and it was just a special journey, you know, with a, with a, a group of special guys and special coaches. So, and coach Frost, he was the guy to catalyst it all. He was a great coach, a great leader. And with all that, he's an even better person. So um, that's someone I definitely look up to and, and, I hope to emulate him one day when, when I get into coaching. Well, you know, I love Coach Scott Frost. I've been following him for years because, you know, I went to Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska, and he was the Nebraska quarterback winning the national championship. And why, why, is, why was he such an effective coach uh, at UCF? I mean, he just commanded the locker room, but at the same time, he knew he, he cared about his players. And anything he said, like, it – it got through to you no matter what it was. And, you know, it was, if he was getting on you, you knew it never, it was never coming from a place of him having something against you. It was just trying to better you. And I think that was something special about him. So, and also like, he just came to work every day and he's just a genuine guy. You could talk to him about anything going on in your life. So I think that's something that's important as a coach, you know, X's and O's and on the field is one thing, but, when you truly care about your players, that's something that you can truly form a special bond and have that trust on and off the field. No, oh, that's great to hear. I mean, empathy is such a, 
such a key thing for, for any leader, you know, to have success with their teams, whether it be in sports or business. And, and KZ, I, I want to ask you about that devastating knee injury that you had. I mean, I watched that game. I mean, it was, it was horrific and, and you were doing so good in the game. And, and then, uh, you know, tell me the details about how bad that injury really was. Yeah. You know, we were, I think we had won 22 straight games going into that. Uh, and, you know, I just took a bad hit, a helmet to the knee, and my knee dislocated, and I suffered nerve, artery, and limp, ligament damage. It's pretty much the worst knee injury you could possibly have um, playing a sport or in general. Typically, it's something that happens in a, a car accident. Um, it's just unfortunate, and, you know, the rehab process has been tough, but luckily I've had – some great surgeons and a great medical team to, you know, help me through it. So it hasn't been an easy road, but it's definitely um, been rewarding, you know, coming out on the other side of it and, you know, being able to get to, to play again. Uh, amputation was a possibility as well. Yes. With, um, with this injury, when, you know, you have artery and nerve damage, it, it gets dicey, especially with the artery. If there's no blood flow going to your leg, you know, it just becomes a dead leg. So, uh, I think it was about 50-50, you know, with this injury. And, you know, by the grace of God, you know, I was right in Tampa and it was one of the best trauma centers in um, the country, Tampa General. And, you know, they had to do an artery bypass the night I got hurt. And, you know, thankfully they saved my leg and my nerve, my nerve came back, which was also part of, you know, the risk of amputation. The nerve was severed, then you know I'd never get feeling back in my leg, which would also result in amputation. So, um, like I said, just by the grace of God, you know, obviously it's an unfortunate injury, but it could have been worse, and it wasn't. So, you know, I'm back on the football field, playing playing the game I love, and you know, I'm extremely grateful for that. You know, I always felt like that wasn't the the end of the story, and I still don't feel like it is. And you know, I don't take it for granted at all, though. You know, being back on just practicing so because a lot of I mean most people would have said I, I wouldn't get to this point and you know but I never believed that you know my parents they never let me believe that and you know that's that's a goal I had since the moment I got hurt was to get back on the field and you know that's that's what I've been doing and you know it's not just getting back it's is I want to perform at a high level and I feel like I'll be able to do that. Once Scott Frost left um, UCF Josh Heupel became the the head coach um, what's, what's something that you learned from coach Josh Heupel? I think just the main thing I learned from him was just the details of things and, you know, not taking shortcuts or anything like that. You know, we kind of, uh, butted heads a little when I, when he first got there, because, you know, I would sometimes come late to things. And like I said, he was just a, a big guy that, you know, it, if you're not great in the little things in your life, you're not going to be great in, in anything. And eventually, you know, those, those little things will surface. So I, I really appreciate him holding me accountable to that and just bettering every aspect of my life. And you know, I feel like that's the biggest thing I took from him. And now he's at Tennessee and, you know, we actually just talked tonight. So it, you know, I have a lot of love for him and his family and, you know, I, I wish him the best at Tennessee and I'm sure our paths will cross again, you know, very soon. KZ, I want you to tell my viewers about why you decided to transfer from UCF to Florida State. You know, part of it was, you know, my buddy Dylan Gabriel. He uh, He's a graduate from Milani High School as well. And, you know, he's like a little brother to me. And, you know, he's playing QB at UCF. And, you know, he's doing a great job. So main reason I just feel like we're both too good to be on the same team. I feel like that's part of it. You know, there's only one football and, you know, I didn't feel like he had to take a backseat to me or I had to take a backseat to him. So, um, you know, it's his job now over there. I, I, I couldn't write it any better. So, um, you know, hopefully signing off, you know, we'll have a great season. And, um, you know, if the, if everything goes as, as planned, then, you know, that'd be awesome. Then hopefully I'll get a chance to play in the NFL, but, you know, just being here has been awesome for the spring. I've only been here a few months, but and I'm just extremely grateful for the opportunity. 
I mean, that's your, you have that team first mentality right there where, you know, it's, it's all about team, you know, Dylan, and then your teammates there at UCF and you want the best for them. And then now that you're at Florida state, I mean, what, what is it about coach Mike Norville that uh, you admire and that you like about him? You know, I competed against him while he was at Memphis and every time we played them, they were a tough, tough team. They were physical, they were fast, and I like what they ran on offense. And just getting known as a person, you know, he's another one of those guys that truly cares about his athletes and not just on the football field and every aspect of their life. He he um, he expects excellence in, in the classroom, um, how you conduct yourself off the field. And, you know, that's something I appreciate, and I think that's why he's had the success he's had as a coach. I think that's why he'll continue to be one of the best coaches in college football and wherever he goes, he's going to, he's going to continue to flourish because, you know, he's, he's molding players, but he's also molding men, which, you know, I feel like sometimes, you know, some coaches miss the, miss the ball on that, but he's a guy that has surrounded himself with great assistants, great players, and, you know, he's going to yield great results because of that. And, you know, Florida State has, I mean, they have a huge tradition uh, of, you know, football greatness. And, you know, well, tell me about how, how your teammates are. I mean, I know that you have a lot of talent around you. Are, is everyone kind of gelling together right now? Yeah, you know, it's, it's going really good. Our, our spring uh, practices have been extremely productive. I feel like we're making strides each day. And, you know, that's something that's important because you only get to put on the pads for about a month in spring. And, you know, if you got to maximize each day. And I feel like our guys have been doing that, putting in extra work, um, whether it's film, on-field work, anything like that. You know, I don't feel like we've wasted a day in these uh, these spring workouts. And I feel like we've continued down that path. We will have a chance to be pretty good. Um, you know, right now, you are you are who you are today and you are who you are tomorrow. So, you know, we just got to keep pushing the envelope. And, you know, we always talk about getting 1% better. And and the standard for us is just being your best. Nothing less, nothing more, just be your best. So I feel like if we continue down that, we'll have a chance to be a, a pretty pretty special team. Oh, that sounds good. And, and KZ, I want to go a little deeper with you now. Why, why do champions become champions? I feel like it's a combination of things. But I feel like the main thing is consistency. Um, you know, if you're consistent in who you are day in and day out, and it's not just being consistent in, you know, the big things, it's the little things. Like your book kind of talks about, you know, if you get up and make your bed, that's that's the first thing you do. You've already accomplished the first task. So it's not just the big, the big aspects of your life is every aspect of your life. And, you know, when you take care of those things, that's when, you know, that I kind of believe in good luck in, per se, in the sense of, you know, good things will happen to you if you take care of, you know, what you're supposed to, because, you know, sometimes a ball will land in the right spot or it'll roll the right way. Just, uh, just out of the, just out because of what do you, what you put into it, you know, it just happens to be that way sometimes what I've learned, you know, playing sports for a long time. So I feel like consistency is the biggest part of it. And, you know, bringing others along with you is another big part of it, especially in a team sport. Um, you know, like I said, there's no individual success without team success. So a champion is able to bring others along with them to get to where they want to go and, great leaders create other great leaders around them. And, you know, I feel like it's just a combination of all of those things, just the little things add up. And I feel like when you overlook the little things, that's when, you know, you'll get caught slipping eventually. And the slips and the cracks will eventually become losses and you'll find yourself not where you want to be over time. So. No, I love hearing that. I totally agree with you. It's all about those little things because little, little victories lead to big victories. And Casey, you know, when you guys beat Auburn in the Peach Bowl, what, why did you guys win that game? And, and you, I mean, just tell me about what, it, what, it, what you think it was and what, what was it like in the locker room at halftime? You know, I feel like we won that game because... 
we knew we were supposed to win that game. We felt like we were a better team. And, you know, I, I always say, you know, the game's played out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And by the time Thursday hits, you're walking through. Friday, you're walking through. And it's all dress rehearsal at that point. And then Saturday, you just go out and perform. Um, you know, the separation is in the preparation. And, you know, if you feel like you have the answers to the test already, then you're just going in and marking it up, you know? So um, I feel like that's kind of what set us apart at UCF um, against those other teams. Obviously, you, you have to have good players. You have to have good athletes. But at the same time, if, you know, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. And I feel like our team did a great job preparing and, you know, we knew we matched up physically, athletically, and all we had to do was just go execute. And honestly, we didn't execute a great a great deal during the game, and we still won because we were a better team. And truthfully, I feel like if we played them again and executed at a high level, it would have been a two to four touchdown game easily. Yeah, and that just goes to show you, I mean, how good you guys were. I mean, because great teams can can find a way to win even when they're not playing their best. And, and, to, go back, and, and to go back on what you said at halftime, you know, like I said, we weren't executing well, but we were still up. So we had confidence going in that if we just do our jobs, we'll be just fine and, and win this game. So we didn't, we had no worries. We we felt like we were supposed to win that game and we did. No, it's a it's a mindset. It's I mean, you guys are just believing in yourselves and in each other. I, and I love it. It shit showed on the on the field. And KZ, what what is what drives you to be the best that you can possibly be? Oh, uh, you know, part of it is, you know, I I want to represent, you know, my family with, you know, a lot of a lot of pride. But also, you know, I do it, I do it for myself. And that's not a selfish thing is um I think just coming off the injury is more so you know I want to prove to myself that you know I can come back and you know overcome this obstacle um it's not to prove any doubters wrong or anything like that it's you know it's for me to to just prove to myself and also you know to, to show that you know God can work can work great things through some tough circumstances so it's a combination of those three things I feel like you know myself my family and, and God really. But other than that, you know, you know, I love playing for my teammates. I love all that, but you know, like this, I feel like this year is going to be special just cause you know, it's been a, it's been a long time coming and you know, those people around me have been the, the catalyst to, to help me get back to, to where I want to be to, to play. So mainly for my family, but also, you know, this, this is going to be for me. Um, and I'm not trying to be selfish, like I said, but I feel like you know, I've been through a lot and I just I just really want to enjoy playing football. And I feel like that's what people a lot of a lot of times miss out on. You know, you're playing if you're playing something you love, just go out and enjoy it for yourself. And because one thing about it, whatever sport you're playing, it's not it's gonna end one day. So just enjoy it while it lasts. And football is a game, and games are fun, and you can never lose sight of, you know, why you first got into football, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, KZ, what, what's a big lesson you learned in your young life so far? So kind of like we talked about earlier on um, choices. Um, you know, I haven't always made the best choices um, in college, you know, um, or in high school. But, you know, I've also made some good ones. Uh, you know, I made a good choice to come out here to UCF. And, you know, that's what ultimately led me to FSU. So um, I feel like that's the biggest thing I learned. You're, you know, your choices define who you are and that ultimately, ultimately determines your legacy. You know, you can choose to work hard or you can choose to take a day off, but you'll never get that day back. So um, that's kind of one thing I – one thing I've learned, and that's something my dad's always kind of, you know, harped to me, you know, your choices are going to ultimately determine who you are, because that's all life is, is a series of choices. And like I said, I, I know I'm not perfect. You know, I'm trying to better myself every day. But you know, I know I try to surround myself with the right people and, and make the right choices for the most part. And you know, that's one thing I've learned. And that's one thing I'll try to carry with me, you know, forever, really. No, I, I like hearing that because that's why uh, chapter one is the choice is yours in the book. <laughs> and Casey, you know, you and I, we've been on 
uh, so many teams in the past, you know, and we know what the coach or the leader has done that was good or what they did that was bad. What do you feel the greatest leaders do? I feel like the, the greatest leaders, they, um, they set the standard and, you know, they, they'll do anything that they expect their players to do and they'll go through that fire with them. Um, they don't just ask or tell them to do something and don't go through and do it themselves. I feel like the, the best leaders lead by example and action. I, I kind of like saying you lead by action more than example because action, you're, you're putting forth and going to do something with them. So I feel like the best leaders I've been around have done that and uh, they've yielded great results and, you know, they made even greater leaders around them, which is, which is, I feel like, you know, leaving a legacy, you know, making, you know, anybody can, you know, do something for themselves, but when they, when they branch off, like in your book, you know, they talk about Bill Belichick having his coaching tree and Nick Saban, his coaching tree, that's, that's a legacy. And I feel like that's, that's the mark of a true leader, you know, changing, you know, not just the people's lives around them, but the people's lives around them and then so forth, those people that they're going to impact. I think those are the best leaders I've been around. And, you know, that's something I admire and, you know, hope to be one day. Oh, that's exactly what you're doing, Mackenzie. And, and I, ask, I want to ask you one more thing. How do you define greatness? Man, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question right there. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say greatness is, you know, if you're able to look into the mirror every day and, you know, be able to tell yourself you gave your best, you know, in that day, in that moment, and you're continuing to better yourself. I feel like that makes you great. You know, you, not every person's, you know, a five-star athlete or a world-class athlete, but you can be great in anything. You can be great in, in something. And whatever your niche is, whatever your skill is, everybody's got some something that they're good at. But it's finding that little thing to separate you from someone else and become great and it's the little things, the little things that matter. And, you know, the difference between good and great, I learned in Pop Warner football, is just a little more effort, a little more effort each day that's going to separate you inch by inch, block by block, and those inches become feet, those feet become yards. And then before you know it, you're miles ahead of the competition. And um, I feel like the greatest competition is yourself because if you start comparing yourself to others, you know, that's where it gets dicey because – someone might be far ahead of you or way behind you. So if you're comparing yourself with someone far behind you, then you're really regressing because, you know, that's, that's not the standard. The standard should be to just better yourself every day. And I feel like that's, that's what greatness is all about. KZ, you are a great example of greatness. And I want more KZs in the world. And I want to thank you for taking time to join me on the show today. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me, Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that KZ and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.